Hello, welcome to episode three of Watching All the Pay Per Views. Today, what I'm looking forward to WrestleMania 1. It's the first WrestleMania and the first WWE pay per view. Match cards looking kind of good. We got who's on the show? King Kong Bundy's on there, Steamboat's on there, Dick Blood for the avid fans of the Keith Spoon channel. Um, Bruce Beefcase there, Junkyard Dog, Greg Valentine, who we've seen before. The Iron Sheik, Nikola Kolov, they're back. Andre the Giant, and obviously Mr. T, a massive racist Hulk Hogan, take on Paul Orndorff and Roddy Piper in the main event. Let's see what WrestleMania 1 has to offer. <laughs> so this is the first thing we see, and I hope it doesn't age badly. The opening sting for WrestleMania 1 is pretty good. You get to see all the people in all the fights, and then some random guys at the end afterwards. It's quite cool. Uh, I liked I liked it a bit. So here's the commentary team. I I assume they're so much better than Bert and Ernie from the last fucking show. Let's see. Let's see the Fink announce the matches. Here we see Fink. God, I, he's dead as fuck, isn't he? Kind of sad. But I completely forgot this. Oakland, Mean Gene himself is about to sing the national anthem. I won't boo it, but oh, it's silly, isn't it? Mean Gene's not too bad here singing the anthem. It just sucks that the American National Anthem is is ass. But let's see what happens next. Oh, it's WrestleMania, baby. So after the National Anthem and the commentators just kind of say it's saying basically nothing, we go over this guy who's just said, oh, match one. We got the Masked Assassin versus Tito Santana. The Masked Assassin not being Assassin 1 or 2, sadly, being the Executioner. And now we're going to see Mean G and interview them both one at a time. Because face heel, bitch. Oh, it's going to be a long show, isn't it? So Tio does a big kind of face. I don't really care. He's like, oh, you don't know the big league's the executioner, but I do. And I'm going to end your undefeated streak. And then he says a Reba. And then we're at the next interview, because great. Now we get a good little interview where the executioner just says, ah, I'm a big league, I'm going to break your leg. Because, you know, Greg Valentine must have fought him. I, I could find out, I don't want to. But yeah, it looks like this match is going to go about two minutes. And I assume Tito's going to win, because that's how it would go. It's WrestleMania, baby. Woo. So I'm all down with the parts unknown bit. Like, oh, it works for some characters. Weight unknown, I don't get that. Just putting on scales before he goes out of gorilla, you dumb asses, lazy pricks. So the first thing I noticed in this match is, Jesus Christ, the ropes are so loose. Like, the first thing they do is a crisscross spot. And I think, oh, the ropes are all going to just snap and they're all going to die. They don't. The match is fine. Um, ends with a submission, which is nice. But he didn't tap. The executioner did not tap. So I think the ref the ref went out to try to fuck on him. Uh, I'll probably give that four out of ten because it's a fine little thing. Let's see what's next on the first ever WrestleMania, baby. Woo! So then we get this guy. I've forgotten his name, but like he just seems nervous, and he's like, "Oh, we're gonna get some interviews with Mean Gene Oakland. Remember the guy that sang the national anthem? Him. He's gonna talk to Big King Kong Bundy and Jimmy Hart." And let's see what they have to say. So here's um, Special Delivery Jones' official name, birth name. It's actually on the certificate. He's saying he's going to win at WrestleMania. He's fighting King Kong Bundy. The match goes less than 30 seconds. I think SD Jones is full of shit. Jesus Christ, King Kong Bundy's big. Like, I know he is because he's King Kong, but fuck me. He also looks like a really obese Sid Barrett. He also, like, just is completely staring at his teleprompter. He doesn't know his promo. Silly man. But he's about to win, so who fucking cares? King Kong Bundy wins in 25 seconds. Why put this on WrestleMania? Literally why? I guess make the big guy look big, but stupid shit. What's next? Also, I give that 2 out of 10. It was a squash match with, like, two moves. Also, next time you hear me, this is going to be the next day. I'm fucking going to bed, lads. I'm, I'm EP boy. EP Thomas the Historian. Let's see what's next on WrestleMania 1. Oh. So here's Mean Gene talking about uh, Matt Bourne. The promo he gives is, it's a promo that happened. He just says, ah, oh, Ricky, you're like me. We both want to be out here and win, but Ricky, you're too nice. 
What the fuck are you talking about? Idiot. Anyway, who we who we talking to next, Mr. Mean Gene Oakland? We now get a promo from Channel Favorite, Ricky Steamboat, aka Dick Blood. He just says generic face things, but he's looking built as fuck. And I think we're about to go get the match, so hopefully it's good because Steamboat knows how to wrestle quite well. Let's see what happens next. Ah, uh, this was a good match. I like Steamboat. He's a good wrestler. One big fucking annoyance is they keep talking about Jimmy Snooker. Now, for those that are stupid, Jimmy Snooker is a murderer. He murdered his fucking girlfriend. Stop talking about him all the fucking time. Anyway, uh, the match went under five minutes, so no cage match rating. But Father Meltzer gave it a, a, a rating because it's Dave Meltzer. Why wouldn't he? And he gave it a six and a half out of ten. So what's that? Three and a quarter stars. I'd give this a good six out of ten. This was a good, a good all round match. Uh, it's just I wish they didn't mention Snooker every thirty seconds. He did a murder, and WWE fucking covered it up. Anyway, let's see what Lord Alfred Hayes has to say. The, the man, the ginger man. Uh, we go over to Lord Alfred Hayes, and he just kind of says, "Ah, oh, we have some interviews now." And he just says, "Oh, did you know David San Martino's dad's Bruno San Martino?" Just in case people thought San Martino was just a really common fucking name. But yeah, we've got Brutus, Brutus the Barber Beefcake versus uh, David San Martino. We're about to get the uh, interviews for that. So let's see what they have to say. Hello, this is the third day. Uh, I don't know I said hello there. Anyway, mid, mid segment. Um, San Martino, son, just says, oh, yeah. Oh, I'll get you. Brutus and his dad says, "Oh, Jimmy Valiant on the outside. If you come and heck with me, I'll punch you." And they all talk like they really need to be somewhere else. This promo was mental. Um, Brutus the Barber we have just goes down the mic, as you can see. And the other guy just says, "Oh, bah, we'll get you. We'll get you." And for some reason, Brutus is dressed up like gold dust, but without makeup. What the hell? I think the match is next. So the match was fine. I mean, it was an eighty. Uh, it was an eighties match. Like there was a suplex, a back body drop, about thirteen different fucking knee bars. Uh, ended in double DQ, which I think is wrong because Jimmy Valiant clearly body slammed David San Martino, so he should get the win. But I guess it was to have Bruno San Martino be like, yeah, woo. Because he's, you know, he's WWE, WF, whatever, history man. A living legend, as they put it. And then you just him on the show, I guess. Because it makes sense, why wouldn't you? But they could have just, like, had them win. Instead of having him a, a double DQ. Uh, cage match gave this, on average. Because, yeah, you know how it works. 3.25, that's about right. I give it 3 out of 10. One and a half star match was acceptable. Also, the second longest match on the show, I think simply because the first four minutes was just Jimmy Valiant buggering around with Brutus, the barber. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was fine. Let's see what happens next. Ah. Uh, we get a little roundup of everything that happened. We get a little replay of the last match after the match because, you know, we need a replay. They just... See, I don't know why. I prefer these two basically infinitely more than the guys from WCW because these guys make it feel more like professional wrestling. The guys like, oh, here is a sport. Let's get this done. They have very little, like, they're just down-the-line commentators. They're, they're Byron Saxon. They're David Otunga. These guys have a bit of character. They're JR. They're king. I mean, I don't like Lawler because, you know, he's pervy. But, you know, it's a character. These guys have character. The other guys are just, oh, yes, what a, what a match there between Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair. Uh, but yeah, down to Lord Alfred Hayes to see what's next. Mr. Hayes here just says next match is, between, is for the IC belt. Greg Valentine, Junkyard Dog. Over to the interviews with Mean Gene. Valentine here, cutting a little heel promo, being like, I'm the best there is. Uh, he says he's got the best IC title reign of all time. Wrong. I mean, at the time, it was probably right, but no Gunther does. 
Let's go through all of the best wrestlers to try to lace up his boots. I'll die in that fucking hell. And then it says he's the master of the figure four leg lock. Famously, that's Flair. I guess WWE, WF at the time, because all the pandas weren't annoyed yet. We're trying to, I don't know if they were trying to bury WCW by saying, oh, he does the figure four bat. But I'm pretty sure, if memory serves, Jimmy Hart and Greg Valentine were on the WCW shows. It's all a bit incestuous. Anyway, let's see what Junkyard Dog has to say next. And Junkyard basically just says he needs to win. It'll be a big day for him if he wins. He can buy some bones because he's a dog. I I think I don't really understand him. I could rewind it, but I, I don't want to. Let's watch the match. So Junkyard Dog makes his entrance because he actually gets an entrance on like, the champion Greg Valentine, which is strange. But he's clearly got a edited, they've edited out his original theme. I googled it. He used to walk up to bloody another one by the by Queen. How the hell do they get away with that? Genuinely, I don't get it. So, like, I understand ECW because they just didn't care, but this is WrestleMania. Baby, whoa! Like, would, wouldn't, wouldn't they have been caught and done in? I, I know it's been edited afterwards, but that's mental. He used to walk out to Queen. But yeah, let's see how the match goes. I know I don't normally go over specific parts of matches, like, as they happen, but these headbutts, oh my god. Like, I know wrestling's not real, but it doesn't even nearly, it just looks weak. And even if it wasn't, even in a real situation, he's just lightly tapping your head against someone, because you're not going to head on head someone if you're on your all four. I guess he's a junkyard dog, but it's silly, and it made me chuckle when I first saw it. That's funny. So the match, I, I don't know what just happened. So the match was like acceptable. And then um, Greg cheated, ropes, feet on the ropes. Ref counted three. So the match is over. They haven't announced they're doing or the redoing it, dusty finish, whatever. Tio comes in and shouts, Tio Santana. And now the ref's counting Greg out. Um, What? I don't. They didn't announce that. This is this is silly bollocks. Uh, let's. I assume the match isn't over. He's gonna count him out though. So does the title not change? I. Uh, I don't get it. Why have they done a bollocks? Why have they done a silly bollocks? Silly men. So yeah, they just count him out, Greg. But the title doesn't change hand. What? What? What was the point? That's the question. I don't know why they did that. The title didn't change hand. Um, if you didn't want the John Dog to lose or and you didn't want Greg Valentine to lose, why book the match? Like, hmm? There was already a, a naff finish in the match before. Another naff finish. Not really what you want on your main pay-per-view, your first ever pay-per-view, is it? But hey ho, the match is over. Junkyard Dog wins. It was a fine match, acceptable. I mean, nothing brush taken. It is 1986, 1985. Uh, 1985, they first of March. But yeah, that gets uh, another 3 out of 10, 1.5 stars. Like, it was fine. You know, it was a wrestling match from the 80s with a bollocks finish. Great. What's next after they go over? I assume they're going to go over the, the match again because uh, the body goes, ah, oh, let's go back in time and see how this went down. So I assume they're going to go over that. Then we'll already see someone who I'm about, you're about to see. It's going to be Gene or it's going to be Alfred Hayes. Let's see. So we get Lord Alfred Hayes now saying the next match is for, the, I assume, the tag titles. Yes, the WWF Tag Team Championship <laughs> with the Challengers. I don't know which ones are the challengers. I assume. Let me check. You can scroll quicker. Uh, the challengers are and Sheik and Nikolai Volkov. Volk, Nikolai Volkov fighting the US Express of Wyndham, Barry Wyndham and Mike Rotunda. They've now got interviews, and I think these are going to be fucking insane, especially from Sheiky Baby. May his soul rest. This isn't as insane as I wanted it to be. Um, it's just a, oh, yeah, we're foreign heels. We're going to win the belts. Uh, and then Mean Gene 
refers to Nikola. He goes, so he talks to Sheik, he talks to Classic Freddy Blassie, then he goes to um, Ni- Nikolai, Nikolai Volkov, Vladimir Volkov, uh, Nikolai Volkov. He goes, so Kobe, I mean Comrade, which I think is funny. That's a little bit funny. Uh, but yeah, then we'll have to see the the Midnight Express. It is uh, the US Express on the Midnight Express. That's to do with Cornet, Mister Jim. So they gotta say. So now we get some uh, the promos from the uh, US Express, and I can't really pay attention to the thing because what the fuck is on his face? He's like he's got stapled rubber bands on his face. He's got a beer though, so. Go it. So yeah, we hear from Lou Al- Albano, Albino, talking about the US Express, and they're like, "Look, man, we ain't got much to say." He's spoken for us in the ring. So let's see the tag team action. Volkov now sings his the Soviet national anthem, uh, and all I notice while it's happening, besides he can't sing, uh, people just lobbing shit consistently at them, which is unkind. And then she goes up to me and says, Soviet Union. I can't do his accent. That wasn't even his. That was just the voice. All right. Got a success. Anyway. Um, he just says, Russia, number one. Uh, Iran, number one. Can't both be number one. Uh, America, spit noise. Now we've got the US Express coming out. And I'm pretty sure they've had their theme edited. Let's see. Yep, yeah, the music was changed to generic music, but originally they had Born in the USA, which is really funny because that's an anti-American protest song, and they're the big Americans going against the foreign heels because wrestling is intrinsically stereotypical. But yeah, let's see how the match goes. Probably bad because the 80s. But I don't know, Sheiky Baby's there. You break Hogan's neck. You make you humble. Go fuck self. Rest in peace. New champs. Pretty good match, you know. Another heel-ish finish, but not a, a shitty finish. He does use a, a cane on him. The cheeky baby. But it's all good. Um, yeah, good match overall. Good to see some titles change. I would probably That's probably better than the last two matches. Give that a nice sort of 5 out of 10, 2.5 stars. Yeah, let's see... What's next? I should also mention, bold move of them to put the belts on here, these guys at WrestleMania 1. After the guys, big all-Americans, USA chance mid-match, and they just put the belts on the big foreign heels at the WrestleMania 1. Bold move. So he'll be as bold as if they don't, as if all the Scottish people lose tomorrow. Dating the video, guys. Ooh. Not tomorrow, day after. I can't even get my days right. Day after the clash of the castle, clash of the castle in Glasgow, I think I think one of the Scottish people might win. I hope Drew wins. That's for a different time in about six years when I've gotten up to date. Anyway, what's next? So here we have the mental promo I was expecting. I I think I understood maybe three of the words Sheik says here. He's like, oh, "America the worst." I cannot do Sheik voice. Yeah, America the worst. Arab and the Russia the best. Um, yeah, back to ringside now. So what's, what's going on? Get a little bit of the commentators talking, talking about um, how they didn't like how they won, but all's fair in love and war. And they claim that the last match was a war, very short war. I think the, the war in question, I'm pretty sure it didn't surpass seven minutes. Let me just get my notes. Anyway, let's get the notes in a second. Uh, Alfred Hayes now is explaining the next match is Andre the Giant versus Big John Studs in a $15,000 body slam challenge, which I think they're nicking a bit from the previous WCW pay-per-view Starcade, as that was the million-dollar challenge, which, I, I mean, way to lowball yourselves, guys. But yeah, the war went 6 minutes 55. Next match... Andre the Giant with Big John Stud. Oh, we've got some promos first. We now get a promo between uh, Bobby the Brain and uh, John Stud and Aussie Gene. 
And they're like, oh, we all this money. And Gene keeps trying to grab the money. Gene, are they not paying you, mate? What the heck, man? It's only 15000 I mean, that's a significant amount of money, but I'm, I'm sure you are still getting paid, Gene. You don't need to grab it. Anyway, I'm uh, pretty sure Andre's up next. going to do a promo. Andre wins. He slams John Stun, gets fifteen grand. The match was a wrestling match between two big guys where they can't do any moves on the level of a fucking power slam. Body slam, sorry, not power slam. As it would end the match. But, I mean, it was decent. Two out of ten. One star, you know. Nothing out of Sharon, but, you know, see what happens in the post-match. Post-match, Andre is like, oh, I can do it. I do not know why I sound like Arnold. I am French. Um, he's like, yeah, I can do it. No one can slam me. I can slam you, though, John Studd. He doesn't need the money, and he doesn't want to retire. And now let's see what is happening next. Oh, Moolah's a bad person. Um, after Andre speaks, they're like, they go back to the commentary. Like, oh, this is the base event. We've had bad... We've had bad Super Bowls. We've had bad NBA Finals. We're never going to have a bad WrestleMania. They're wrong. They're fucking dead wrong. WrestleMania 9? WrestleMania 27? Like, come on, lads. WrestleMania 35? It wasn't bad. It was fucking too long. WrestleMania 36? No fans. No, no fans. Anyway, uh, then go Alfred Hayes, and he's like, oh, yeah. Next match is the first match in the Rock and Sock Connection. Not Rock and Sock. Rock and Wrestling <laughs> Connection. So you've got Cindy Lauper and Wendy Richter. Well, not together. We've got Cindy Lauper. We've got Wendy, Wendy Richter with Cindy Lauper in her corner versus Lilani Kai with Evil Person, Fabulous Moon in her corner. But now we've got an interview between with Cindy and Wendy and genie we now get a mix of um deep south brooklyn and casual sexism so first of all medium first is the ladies title no it's the woman's title and then at the end he's like oh ladies ladies please cringe cringe mean mean gene was well, the 80s but cringe and cindy lauper just shows off she's from brooklyn it's like yeah we're going to fight you. No, that's the wrong accent. I can't do accents. No one's going to be here watching this pit, so it doesn't matter what I do. And then we get... Um, oh, fuck. Wendy Richter with a deep south saying, I never lost that title. I'm Australian, apparently. Um, hello. Nah, got my boom boom stare. I never lost my title. It only lost because damn Moola got involved. So now we get... The heel promo, I assume. I just realised, besides um, Barbara in the first pay per view, this is the, this is the, the these are the first time I've actually had women wrestlers because rest women's wrestling guys. Apparently, it doesn't matter. Fuck you. Um, I don't know why there's so little at the time. I guess because WCW didn't have any. I, I guess. Uh, weird. Anyway. Jerk heel promo 32. We're going to win. We're going to come back the victors. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'll go by any means necessary. And then Mean Gene shows it's the 80s and goes, Oh, ladies, ladies, please. Within reason. Anyway, I think we've got the match now. Let's see if it's any good. Maybe it's a network thing or a thing of the time. But, like, some people just don't get entrances like, at all. They're just in the ring. Um, So the champion again entrance again, which is weird. And then... Cindy Lauper and Wendy Richter came out, but to generic music. So they says there's going to be girls just want to have fun. I don't know why they didn't pay for that licensing. It seemed that it's like, you know, half of the reason, like not half of the reason, but it's a major reason as to why WrestleMania 1 worked so well because it had the casuals of the, the rock people. So that was strange. But yeah, I think we're on with the match. And G- I, maybe the, maybe the, I'm being harsh. The, bit, the title is just called the ladies title. But he does also refer to it. We refer to Moolah as a previous woman's title. I, d- I don't know. I just feel like calling it a lady's title, which makes it seem weird. I don't know. It might just be a me thing. But like, it's the men and women's title. It's not the, the men and the gentlemen and ladies, is it? Strange. Uh, it might just be me being fucking nutter. I hope the match is good. 
I'm confused a little bit. This person is, I can't, I can't tell which one it is because I don't know what you've them look like overly. They're just tapping right in front of the referee after being in an arm hold. What the fuck? That's a, that's a, that's a submission win. What the hell? This was a good match. When, when you rigged the one, there were some cool moves in here, some weird, I don't really know what it was. It was like a gorilla press, but in a diamond's carry thing. The finish was a bit, eh, a crossbody that, that, when you to roll up, but it's fine, you know, it's fine. It's it's old. It's getting four stars, no four stars, two stars, four out of ten. Uh, the wrestling isn't as good back in the day, evidently. Uh, but yeah, no, it's still pretty good. Um, all we've got left, match wise, and that was the main event between a racist, a racist, a racist, and Mister T. <laughs> well. I say racist. Hogan said the N-word. Orndorff did racist eyes. Roddy Piper did the black face. And Mr. T is sadly also there. The non-wrestler, main eventing, WrestleMania. Woo. Here is the post-match interview. I don't know what I said here is. It was, it was fine. It was a face. We won. Those devious people didn't get us a second time. And Cindy Lauper mispronounces the wrestler's name. And is the most Brooklyn woman I've ever heard. Let's see what's next in the ring. Back in the ring, Finkel says, ah, oh, main event's coming soon, but here are the special people. A baseball man. I have no idea anything about baseball. I think Babe Ruth is a baseball player who was good. Um, the Knicks, maybe. I don't know. The Cubs. The Red Sox. Jay-Z from New York. I think he says Red Sox in Empire State of Mind. I don't know. I, I don't follow American sports, but he's here. Woo. Now here comes he, he announced some of the officials and here comes Liberace. Don't know who Liberace is, but he's got some big dance women behind him, so maybe they're gonna do a dance. I was right. They're dancing. The dance went on for each but here's an actual hurt uh, good a goated man. Muhammad Ali. I haven't got a joke for him. It's cool he's here. He's the timekeeper, special guest referee. I don't know. Uh, no, Liberace's a timekeeper. Don't know who Liberace is. I think he might be a dancer, man. I don't know. I don't know who Muhammad Ali is. He'll fucking kill you. To death. Out comes Rowdy Roddy Piper. Full orchestrated entrance with bagpipes and drums. This is a good entrance. It's one of the first good entrances we've seen in pay-per-view. The other one's a bit... Oh, no. Flair's, Flair's on Starcade 83. That was very good. That's one of the best entrances. That's what he so far top tier entrance. But I think I might just be that's how he entered all the time. Anyway, who's next? <clears throat> Somehow I didn't notice Paul Orndorff came out with Freddie Piper. Um, but he did. Uh, so here's to come out to real American. But IMDb says this was edited, and originally they came on to I am the tiger. But I like real American. I'm a real American. Fight for the rights of every man. So Mr. T, Hulk Hogan, you know, the two of the most American men. If they're John Cena, Apple Pie, and bloody, I don't know, Cody Rhodes, it could possibly be more American. And Lincoln, Lincoln's American. Let's see what happens next. Oh, no, it was Jimmy Snooker. He murdered his girlfriend. I forgot about his involvement in this match. That was an absolute clusterfuck. No idea how that, when Roddy hit him, hit Hogan with a steel chair, that wasn't a DQ, because I'm pretty assuming there are DQs. And it'd say there wasn't. Uh, there was, it's basically a three on three match. Snooker was involved loads. I think it's Bob Orton Sr. was involved lots. But obviously the face come out of win, but Hogan got the pin. I. I'd never watched this match before. But I just thought Mr. T would have got the pin. But yeah, I mean... The idea of the match is so much better than the execution. Once the clustery stuff been ended, it was fine. I mean, it was nothing like, oh my god, this is the best wrestling ever. But yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. I'd probably give it a... Uh, oh, I don't know, man. Maybe a, a five out of ten, two and a half stars, because it did have star power. It was a bit clusterfucky in places, but I mean, I guess 
some of the moves were good. There was actual wrestling moves in a wrestling match consistently from all all competitors. Mr. I mean, Mr. T went too bad. But yeah, that was that. Let's see what how the show ends and the post-match stuff. Post-match was fine. I mean, they just like uh, it's a weird thing with Paul Orndorff thinks the match is still going. I, I don't really... I was so I don't care. Uh, then we had the post-match interview with Mr. T, a racist and a murderer. Uh, they're like, oh, brother. So Mr. T gives a normal, like, yeah, wrestling's hard. You've got to do it, man. You've got to get, don't take it on for granted. That shit's rough. Hogan does a Hogan. Oh, well, let me tell you one thing, brother. When I, when I trained with Mr. T, I knew there was something inside his soul. And then Snooker's like, don't ask me about where I was and my relation with Argentina's death. He didn't really say that, but he's a murderer. We shouldn't forget it. He can do it. Oh, he, oh, he can do a crossbody. He can do a splash. He killed a woman. Bastard. And then Hogan says, oh, us three, we're going to be together for a long time. Which is a fucking lie. But anyway, they said it. There's like minutes left. Let's see what's the rest of the show. After their promo, we go over to see Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse Ventura. You just say, oh, what well, good night for wrestling. They says, we'll see you all next time. And similar goodbyes. Then we get a little recap of the whole show. Some photos. I read. I flicked through the credits to see if this was where director Kayfabe the screenshot comes from. No, that's from the 87 Slammies. And that is the end of WrestleMania 1. Was it a good show? I mean, yeah, for the, for the time. The, how well does it hold? I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's cool to see all the pomp and circumstance of... WrestleMania, but the match quality is abysmal. So the best match on the card was Steamboat Matt Bourne, then followed by Sheik and Kolov versus the US Express, and then the main event. There were the only three good matches. Overall, I give the pay-per-view a 3.7 out of 10 on match quality. Um, it weren't great, was it? It's old wrestling, a lot of shitty finishes. But yeah, that's WrestleMania 1. Next time I review a wrestling pay-per-view, the next one is another WWE one. It is, I want to just say it, the Wrestling Classic. I'm pretty sure that's a pay-per-view. Let me just, yeah, it's in the tournament. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a fucking pay-per-view and it's on the network. Um, the Wrestling Classic 1985 1985 is a pay-per-view it's the pay-per-view I will be reviewing next time thank you if you've gone this far hit that like button subscribe I, I need it I do notice it and if you comment I'm going to respond I have 37 subs. This video will get five views. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh!